A stone is thrown at an angle of 41 degrees, as measured from the horizontal, from the edge of a cliff. The initial speed of the stone is 60 meters per second, and the height of the cliff is 155 meters. Part A, how long does it take the stone to reach the level ground below the cliff? Part B, how far from the base of the cliff did the stone land? And part C, with what velocity did the stone strike the ground? Include a magnitude and a direction. Let's start with part A. How long does it take the stone to reach the level ground below the cliff? So before we do anything, we should probably draw a picture of this. So. Here is our cliff, here's the level ground below, and we're throwing a stone from the edge of the cliff down to the bottom. And we should also pick an origin. I'm gonna let this be the origin right here. And if that's my origin, then this direction is gonna be my positive x, and up here is gonna be positive y. Okay. And I also should define what I'm gonna call my initial position. And the initial place for the stone is gonna be right here. That's what I'm gonna call initial. And for final, it's gonna be when the stone lands because that's what I care about. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's figure out what we know. So to do this, I usually make a chart that shows all the different things for projectile motion that I would possibly be interested in and then fill in as much of it as I know. So right here I have the X position initial, the X position final, the initial velocity in the X direction, the final velocity at the X direction, uh, the acceleration in the X direction, and the time. And when I say initial with a little zero subscript here, that's referring to right here, and final, which has no subscript, that's referring to right here when the stone is uh, at the bottom. That's the x direction, uh, and I can also do the same thing for the y direction. So let's, uh, I could write a bunch of equal signs or I just kind of make a chart like this and I'm gonna fill in as much of this stuff that uh, I can. Uh, and then I'm also gonna make a chart over here that's gonna have the same things but for the y direction. So I have y initial, y final, the initial velocity in the y direction, the final velocity in the y direction, the acceleration in the y direction, and I don't need to write time again. Time doesn't have a direction. Uh, so I'll put the theta, the angle right there. And we're gonna fill in as much as we can for these 12 things. Okay. So let's see, a stone is thrown at an angle of 41 degrees. Okay, so 41 degrees goes right in here. Okay, uh, from the edge of a cliff, the initial speed of the stone is 60 meters per second. Well, if I know the initial speed and I know the angle, I can break it into components. This is the angle right here. It's measured from the horizontal. So that's theta, and that's the angle that it makes with my initial velocity vector. If I were to uh, zoom in on that vector there, it would kind of be looking like this. There's my initial velocity vector. This is the angle theta right here. And if I were to break this into components, I could have the initial x component here and the initial y component would be over here. Now this is the same thing as this over here. I could also call this side the initial y component, same length right there. Um, so I can use uh, my uh, sine and cosine here to figure out what the components are. The sine of the angle, sine of theta, and uh, to do this I'm using SOHCAHTOA so this is S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -A. This is uh, the mnemonic device can help you remember sine, cosine, tangent. Sine is the opposite side of a right triangle divided by the hypotenuse. 
So the opposite side, that's the y component of the initial velocity, v initial y, divided by the hypotenuse. That's just v initial, just the uh, vector itself. And I'm going to write the magnitude of it, v initial. OK, so that tells me that v initial y, the y component of the initial velocity, is the initial velocity times the sine of theta. And I know both of these things. The initial velocity is 60 meters per second. And the angle is 41 degrees. And so that tells me, if I were to do this on a calculator, uh, 60 times the sine of 41 is 39.4 meters per second. And that's the initial velocity in the y direction, the y component. So that goes here, 39.4 meters per second. Great. Now let's look at the cosine. The cosine of the angle theta, that's going to be the adjacent, which is the x component, is adjacent. V initial x over the hypotenuse, that's going to be V initial. And so that allows me to solve for V initial x. So that is V initial cosine theta. And again, plug in 60 meters per second times the cosine of 41 degrees. And if you do that on a calculator, you end up getting 45.3 meters per second. And that goes up here, 45.3 meters per second. Okay, that's supposed to be a decimal point. All right. What else? Uh, the height of the cliff is 155 meters. So. If my origin is here, that 155, that must be y initial, 155 meters. What else do I know? Well, if my origin is here, x initial in the x direction must be 0 meters. And if this is the final position, well, that's when y is 0, so y final is 0 meters. Uh, what else do I know? The acceleration in the x direction, that's always 0 meters per second squared. And since there's no acceleration in the x direction, the initial velocity in the x direction equals the final velocity in the x direction. So this must also be 45.3 meters per second. And one more thing I know, acceleration in the y direction, that's negative g, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared, if I'm at the surface of the Earth, which I'll uh, assume that we are here. And I think that's about all that I can fill in right now. So what I'm going to do now is summarize everything here in this chart over on the side. And these are all the variables that we know so far. And let me quickly just draw the sketch here of the uh, path of this stone. Remember that this right here was initial. This right here is what we're calling final. And this right here is my origin. So I want to know how long it takes the stone to reach the level ground. That's looking for time. Well, let's see. What do I know? I could try the x direction. In the x direction, there's really only one equation that I could ever possibly use. And it's this one. V initial x t plus 1 half ax t squared. And a bunch of stuff is zero here. Acceleration is zero, so that goes away. My initial x position is zero, so that goes away. So that just leaves me with x equals v initial x times time. And I know v initial x, but unfortunately I don't know x. So this is probably not a good equation to use. So let's try something else. How about, well, I don't know the final y velocity, so I don't want to use any equation that has the final y velocity. So how about I use this equation again, but in the y direction. So I would have y equals y initial plus v initial y t plus 1 half a y t squared. Sometimes you have to 
try different equations out and see which one's going to work. So in this case, my final y position is 0. That goes away. And I think that's about it as far as uh, stuff that cancels. And so I end up getting 0 equals y initial plus v initial yt plus 1 half a yt squared. And this I can solve for time because I know y initial, I know v initial in the y direction, and I know a the uh, y, a y component of a, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. It's a quadratic. So you could go ahead and solve this on a calculator or on a computer, or you could use the quadratic formula. So that's what I'm going to do. I would probably just do this on a calculator, but for the video here, I'll go ahead and do the quadratic formula. So uh, normally what you would do for a quadratic, this would be what you would call, uh, sorry, this would be what you would call C, this would be B, and this would be your A. Uh, a x squared plus b x plus c is how you usually see it written. Now we're not talking about x here, we're talking about t instead of x. So t is what I'm solving for. And the quadratic formula says first thing you have is negative b, so that would be that, plus or minus the square root of, and we have b squared, and that's going to be this squared, minus 4a this is playing the role of A here, C, Y initial, all over 2 times A. That would be 2 times 1 half A sub Y. Okay, so this simplifies a little bit here. I have negative V initial Y plus or minus the square root of V initial Y squared. And I have a four and a half, that's going to make a two. So this is going to be negative two a y y initial all over a y. And I think I'm ready to plug in uh, numbers here. So let's do it. So v initial y, that's 39.4 meters per second, plus or minus the square root of 39.4 meters per second and this is going to be squared, minus 2 times uh, ay, that's negative 9.81 meters per second squared, times y initial, that's 155 meters. All that's uh, underneath the square root here. And then this whole thing is all divided by negative 9.81 eight one meters per second squared. And if you type this into a calculator, since we have a plus or a minus, we're gonna get two answers here. You end up getting negative 2.89 seconds, or we end up getting 10.9 seconds. Since we don't want a negative time here, we're gonna get rid of that one. And that's the one that we're going to use. So 10.9 seconds. That's how long it took to go from initial all the way down to final. Okay, let's look at part B. How far from the base of the cliff did the stone land? So here's our cliff. Here's where the stone went. So we're looking for this distance right here. That's what we're calling x, because remember we put our origin right here. So uh, this will be the x final if we're calling this our final position right here, and we are calling this our initial position right here. Okay, so we're looking for x. Now we know the time. That was 10.9 seconds. That's what we just found in part a, so I can write that in there. And if you uh, recall, we had this equation, x equals x initial plus v initial x t plus 1 half ax t squared, and we got rid of this term because acceleration in the x direction was zero. And we got rid of this term because the initial x position was zero. And so we have x equals v initial x t, and that's what we can use now to get x. So this is pretty easy. We're just multiplying two numbers together. v initial x, that's 45. 0.3 meters per second. The time we just found was 10.9 seconds. And if you do this 
on a calculator, you end up getting, for the uh, distance from the cliff, 494 meters. Okay, we're down to the last part, part C, with what velocity did the stone strike the ground? Include a magnitude and a direction. So before we do this, let's fill in the things that we found from the earlier parts. We remember that the time is 10.9 seconds, and we just found x that was 494 meters. So in order to find the velocity that the stone uh, struck the ground with, we need to find the final x velocity. We know that, 45.3 meters per second. And the final y, we don't know the final y. So let's find that first. Should the final y velocity be a positive number or a negative number? Well, if you remember, here's our cliff one more time. It's being launched here, hits the ground. By the time it hits the ground, we should expect that it would have an x component of the velocity that is going in this direction. There's my x final. And we should expect a y that's going down. So I would expect when I solve the equation here that I would get a negative number. So let's see, we wanna find final y. How about, well, we know everything else except for that. So we can use any equation that has uh, v final y. So how about, what's the easiest one? How about this one? V initial y plus a y t. We can use that. So v final y equals, what's v initial y? That's 39.4 meters per second. Plus a y, that's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Times the time, the time is 10.9 seconds. And what do we get? We end up getting negative 67.5 meters per second. So it is indeed a negative number and that makes sense. We would expect a negative number for this. All right, now uh, if we were to look for the uh, final y velocity here, we know that we have an x component pointing this way, a y component, component pointing down, so we would expect that the final vector should be something like this. This would be our final velocity vector, so I'll just call it v for v final. And to get the magnitude of this, I can use Pythagorean theorem. I know that if I make a little triangle here, this side is Vx, this side is Vy, this side is just plain old V, and so V would be the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. So that would be the square root of, okay, what's Vx? That's 45.3 meters per second. And I'm gonna square that. Plus, what's Vy? Just found it. That would be 67.5 meters per second. I'll leave off the minus sign here. It's getting squared anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And all that under the square root. And so when you do that, you get 81.3 meters per second. So that takes care of the magnitude. Now we want to get the direction. So let's get the direction in terms of an angle. How about getting this angle right here? I'll call it alpha. Um, that'll be the angle below the horizontal. And I can use tangent for that. Remember from Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. The opposite is the y component here, vy. The adjacent would be vx. And so the angle would be the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component, which would be the inverse tangent of, what's the y component? That's 67.5 meters per second. And since we're just looking at a triangle here, um, and we're just trying to find this angle, and we have two sides of a triangle, I would leave off the minus sign. Uh, just think of it as you know a triangle with two sides, and we're trying to find this angle. And then the x component, that was 45.3 meters per second. And we want the inverse tangent of that. And if you do that on a calculator, you end up getting 56.1 degrees. So what you could say is that the stone hit the ground with a speed of 81.3 meters per second. And 
we can say that it hit at an angle of 56.1 degrees below the horizontal 